Hi, I'm Pastor Nancy Nyland, Director for Evangelical Mission for the Indiana Kentucky Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. I bring you greetings today from our Bishop Bill Guffian and from the rest of my colleagues on the Synod staff. Today I'm sharing with you a sermon and prayers for the seventh Sunday of Easter, May 21st, 2023. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 17, verses 1 through 11. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I'm not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so they may, so they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the power of of the Holy Spirit. Our gospel reading today begins like this. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples. Well, you may be wondering what words Jesus has just spoken to his disciples. These words, this conversation, the discourse, these teachings of Jesus begin four chapters before our reading today. Back in the 13th chapter of John, Jesus and his disciples are celebrating the Passover in the upper room. Jesus washes the disciples' feet, predicts that Judas will betray him, gives a new commandment to love one another as Jesus has loved us, and foretells Peter's denial. Before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. And the teaching continues in the next three chapters. Jesus comforts his disciples, tells them that he is the way and the truth and the life, and he promises the Holy Spirit, the advocate. Jesus proclaims that he is the vine and we are the branches. We did not choose Jesus, but Jesus chose us to go and bear fruit. And Jesus commands us again to love each other. Jesus expounds more on the work of the Holy Spirit and assures the disciples that as they experience upcoming events, a nod towards his death and resurrection, that their sorrow will turn to joy. And finally, Jesus says, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. And then the words of our gospel reading today. Jesus looks up to heaven and prays to God, his Father. This is before his arrest. Jesus is praying out loud right in the midst of his disciples. Prayer, sitting around the table, after a meal, after this extended conversation. No doubt the disciples are hearing and focusing on every word that comes out of Jesus' mouth. As Jesus prays, as the disciples listen, Jesus gives us a straightforward definition of eternal life. Jesus prays to God, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life is to know God and to know Jesus. 
It's that simple. Knowing God, knowing Jesus. In the Gospel of John, we come to understand that when John uses the word knowing, it's not just about cognitive knowledge, but it's more. Knowing is about being in relationship. Eternal life is about being in relationship with God, in relationship with Jesus. So that got me wondering, if eternal life is about knowing God and Jesus, about being in relationship with God and Jesus, then eternal life, I think, is not just experienced after we die, but eternal life. Can it be experienced right now? How are you experiencing a relationship with God, with Jesus? How are you experiencing eternal life right now? Isn't that what Jesus had just been teaching about? Relationship? There are the relationships between Jesus and the disciples. This group of friends gathered around the table celebrating the Passover. But it's not all joy and laughter. The brokenness of the world breaks in upon this celebration. Jesus reveals that he knows Jesus is the betrayer. Jesus warns Peter that he will deny Jesus. And at the edge of the celebration is death. Jesus is death on the cross. Betrayal of others, unfulfilled promises, greed, fear, self-preservation. Can you relate? We all experience the brokenness, the sinfulness in this world, the way this brokenness damages and breaks relationships. All too often, I find myself dripping with guilt when I've judged people unfairly, spoken harsh words, acted carelessly, or failed to consider people's feelings and or needs. These words, these thoughts, these actions not only damage my relationship with those involved, but they damage my relationship with me. They damage my relationship with God. You know, it's just one small step from dripping with guilt to not loving myself and another small step to wondering, how could love God even love me? But we live right now in eternal life, in relationship with God, with Jesus, God, the one who sent his son into the world to save the world. Jesus, the one who suffered and died for us and rose in victory to give us the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. In our brokenness, in our sinfulness, Jesus offers us forgiveness, not once, but every single time we need to be forgiven. Forgiveness. It does not remove the consequences of our sin, but forgiveness, this forgiveness of God, is wrapped in a relationship of love and grace and mercy and brings healing and peace and wholeness and reconciliation. Indeed, Jesus teaches about relationship. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. We are connected to Jesus. We get sustenance, growth, abundant life from Jesus. Jesus, the one who chooses us, the one who has chosen each one of us to go and bear fruit. But we are not on our own. For the Holy Spirit, the advocate, is with us in and among us. That spirit is transforming us and comforting us, teaching us, inspiring us, empowering us, giving us the words we need and the courage to speak them. The spirit, God's presence dwelling in us, as close as our breath, as constant as our heartbeat. Eternal love. Our reading ends as we hear these words of Jesus. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you. 
Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. This verse reminds me of a saying that I've heard first in seminary. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. In an article written by David Mathis, he turns this phrase. Instead of focusing on disassociating from the world, removing ourselves from the world that we're in, he suggests that we should focus on our mission in the world. So the saying becomes, we are not of the world, but we are sent into the world. Sent into the world. Each one of us is sent into the world, bearing the cross of Christ on our foreheads, equipped with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are to live out Jesus' new commandment, to love one another as Jesus loved us, sacrificially. Love those who seem unlovable. Love when it's inconvenient. Love with simple acts of kindness. Love your co closest family members and the strangers you meet along life's journey. Love radically and love often. Love from the heart. Love as Jesus has loved us. Love, relationship, eternal life. Jesus prays, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Amen. We now move into a time of prayer. At the end of each petition, I will say, Hear us, O God, and your response is, Your mercy is great. Let us pray. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Empower activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak and live a message of peace and justice. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation loneliness, despair, depression. Break the chains of all held fast by systematic, systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from illness, especially those we name now in our hearts or out loud. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Hear us now as we pray the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit 
to live in the new creation. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.